the unsearchable riches of Christ, Paul calls it. But to, for us to, to enter into that, there's, in, there, there's something on our side that's needed. And so uh, Jesus told his disciples in the beginning of chapter 18 a parable that we know well. And the, par the purpose of the parable, he says, is to show them that they should always pray. But he doesn't stop there, does he? They should always pray and not give up. So here's the value of something. Now, why in the world, I mean, you know, think about it. Why would God set it up this way? Why wouldn't we just come and say, God, I need this. Okay. You know, just snap his fingers and everything is just push button. No, God is seeking to work character in us. He's seeking to change values. And they don't change except by a persistence of an exercise of real faith that does, is not deterred by anything that happens. You know, some, day, some days we get up and we don't feel good. We just feel a little bit out of sorts and grumpy and, and uh, you know, some people wake up grumpy and some people let him sleep, <laughs> as the expression goes. But, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of the way it is. We're, we're that way. We're all over the map in terms of our emotions, in terms of our experiences. But, you know, God is seeking to, to tie our the way we think and what we do, not to these things, not to these earthly values and, and lack of values, but to him and to his promises and his purposes. And it takes an effort. Folks, none of the things that God has for us are simply just, you know, dumped in our lap, uh, dumped in the laps of people who are just kind of, okay, if he wants to give it to me, that's fine. Otherwise, I'm, you know, I'm not going to put forth any real effort. Do you think that's going to work? I don't. And so Jesus gave them the disciple, uh, the disciples. He gave them this parable. And he said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared about men. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. So you got a, you got a judge who doesn't care. And you got a widow who is in the, the weakest position in society. And she's got somebody that has done her an injustice and she's trying to, trying to get justice in the, in the uh, case. For some time, he refused. But finally, he said to, sell, to himself, even though I don't fear God, this is a pretty bad guy here, even though I don't fear God or care about men, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually wear me out with her coming. So here's a, here's a guy totally motivated by self, I don't know what in the world he's doing as a judge. He doesn't care about anybody but himself. And yet here is a case where someone is able to extract from him real justice in spite of all these conditions. Now, is the Lord saying, that's what, I, that's what I'm like? I don't care about you. You're just going to have to wear me out. No. But the Lord is saying, if somebody like that, if somebody in that circumstance can win justice from this kind of a guy, don't you think I care about you? And that's the point. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring justice for his chosen ones who cry out, who do what now? Who do what? They cry out to him once. No, this is a day and night thing. This is... God, I can't make it without you. God, I need you. We do not like to feel powerless. We don't like to feel that we're in a place of need. We don't like to be in a place where we don't know the answer. But the reality is all of those things are true. Who do we think we're kidding? Did not Jesus say, without me... You can do nothing. Did he mean that? Or is that just a piece of theology that we sort of parrot? No, it's the truth. Our problem is, my problem is, I don't always feel that way. I just kind of bop along like I can handle things. Until the Lord puts me down in my face down in the mud and says, wait a minute here. You need me. And it isn't just 
to, sh to prove that he's somebody and I'm nobody to squash me and make me feel bad. It's because he wants me to enjoy him. He knows what he is. He knows that he is the greatest reward any of us could ever have. He's longing to share all that he is with us. And so often we shut him out and push him off to the side, and push him in a corner, and we drag him out on Sunday morning, put on our smile and come to church, and then put him back in the closet for the rest of the week. And God is looking for a people who will cry out to him. If he's put you in a place where you feel you're weak and you're needy, you better be crying out and saying, God, thank you. Maybe that proves that I'm one of your chosen ones because you're causing me to realize that I need, need you. Most people don't know that. They go through life thinking they can handle it. Or at least looking for somebody else or some way or some principle. I mean, isn't that the way we sort of want to push God in the corner too? Just tell me how it works. Let me go to a seminar and you can explain step by step how to handle this, crisis, this type of crisis in life, this type of situation, and then I'll take it from here. I'll be armed with the knowledge that I need and thank you, Lord, it's real nice of you to come by and let me know all these wonderful things, but I'll take it from here. Oh, no, that isn't what the Lord's looking for. We don't need just facts and knowledge and principles. We need him. Because I don't care how much he tells me what to do. I, that doesn't help me if he doesn't help me do it. That's right. That's so right. We are so much wanting to reduce life and, our, and the Christian life to a bunch of principles, thinking we can then follow those principles. You cannot. Nor can I. Everything about the Christian life is a product of life. Not our life either. It's his, and I need him. Man, I'm conscious of it this morning. I came in here feeling about as flat as a whatever. Anybody else feel that way this morning? Well, praise God. The Lord, can, you know, the Lord sometimes does that to cause us to feel that we need him. You know, I think I've mentioned this before, but, and I, you know, necessarily recommend this, nor does it necessarily apply this morning. But, uh, you know, in college, I traveled with a gospel quartet during a couple of summers, and we would sing every night in a different church, and at least three of us in the quartet were interested in, you know, thinking of going into the ministry. I mean, we assumed, we felt like that was where things were headed, and so if we ever got in a church where we felt like there was something there spiritually, I mean, that sort of tells you something about most of them that we went into, but anyway, there was something that was a little bit unusual. We felt like the pastor had something. And there was, a, uh, there was a degree of life and success. What, however we, designed, we, we, we discerned it, we sensed there's something unusual here. Let's get together with this guy and ask him some questions. And let's find out you know, some of his, uh, his insight into what makes a successful ministry. And I remember one church, and if I remember correctly, this one had been started by a layman. Uh, 